welcome back on the channel. Beast here with Beast Tech. This is the Xiaomi Mi 11, and in this video, we're gonna see how good the Xiaomi Mi 11 is in 2021. What I'm trying to understand in my review is is the Xiaomi Mi 11 the most expensive mid tiered spec phone, or is the Xiaomi Mi 11 the cheapest flagship phone for the year 2021? Okay, that's the important question, guys. What is the value proposition that we are getting here from Xiaomi? Are we really buying a very expensive mid-size tier phone or are we really buying the cheapest flagship phone, right? I'm gonna try to give you answers to all of these questions. I'm gonna try to give you answers to all of the questions in this review. Before we start, 96% of people watching my content are not subscribed and I know you can help me fix that one, so a sub would be much appreciated. The first thing I wanna start, of course, is the accessories and just take a note, this here is the gigantic box which the phone arrived with. And why I'm showing this, because in the year of 2021, you are getting also the 55 watts wireless charger. And this in fact is actually a gallium nitride charger. Why is it important? Because the GN chargers are physically smaller than the current chargers. And this is because gallium nitride chargers don't require many components as the silicon chargers. So the material inside is able to conduct far higher voltages over time than the silicon. But okay, forget about this. This thing costs here 40 to $50 retail, right? 40 to 50 USD retail and is included in the box. So for this, really respect to Xiaomi. You're also getting a transparent silicon case and this is actually the case on the phone right now. You're also getting a six amperes rated USB-C to A cable and this is also important. Why? Because the cables arrive with my S21 and Samsung S21 Plus are USB-C to USB-C and you cannot use them to connect to the computer like the desktop PC right only on my laptop. And last but not least, there is also a USB-C to 3.5 millimeters headphone adapter. So remember, headphones they used to connect physically to the phone? Yeah, I know, I know, okay, let's not get started. The way I'm trying to make this review, guys, is not only giving you some rough facts, I wanna give you also my real experience and some buying tips, all right? So if you're looking to buy a phone like this and you have a certain budget, probably this video is gonna be very beneficial to you. And of course, the first thing I wanna start after accessories is just reviewing the design and the build quality. And for that, I'm going to remove the phone from the case, okay? So the phone really has a very premium quality, guys. It has the Gorilla Glass Victus at the front, which is really like the top material right now. And all the main flagships like Samsung, etc., are getting it. But on the back, you're also getting very nice protection. It has the Gorilla Glass 5 on the back. And as you can see, it is curved here on all the edges, but not only on the side edges, you can see it's also curved on the top and on the bottom. So it has this so-called quad curve design, which honestly, I don't have anything against it. And yeah, when you put the phone into the case, I think problem solved because you see this kind of compensates. But the important part here is that you really get a very, very premium quality. It's very comfortable, also very light in the hand. The only thing I don't like here is the size of the cutout. Let me just open something wide. You can see this here is rather big. Could have been also a bit smaller. We have here the power button placed in a very nice position because there's a rather big phone. It's 6.8 inches, so you can really access it very easily with one hand. We have here the volume rocker. Okay, on the top here, you have an IR blaster. Okay, the year is 2021 and you're getting an IR blaster where you can go to a cafe and switch off the TV and switch on the air conditioner, why not? And then here you have, guys, the microphone and then here you have the speaker, right? And speakers are fine-tuned by Harman Kardon. So you can see there is actually an inscription here. But pay attention, a lot of people think that this is the speaker here. In fact, we have here a very, very tiny speaker that also kind of produces sound and you can hear it from there. Okay, the bottom speaker is just this grill there. Here you have the SIM tray. Here you have another microphone, the USB-C port. This phone doesn't really have an official IP rating, but all the Terton videos on the YouTube reveal that the SIM card train, etc., is a bit protected. So maybe it's okay if you go in the rain, but just don't take it to the sea with you. Now let's talk about the camera design on the back, guys. If I show you the phone like this, you're gonna see, and you're gonna say, okay, nice, we have like two bumps but just pay attention. If I do like this, you slowly but steadily will realize that in fact here we have three layers. So it's a tri-bump. And the only thing that makes it kind of look good is that all these layers are very, very thin. So although we have these three layers, the design is not bad at all. Here we have the main shooter, 108 megapixel. Here we have a 13 megapixel ultra-wide camera. And here we have a five megapixel macro camera. And of course, the flash light. If I put the white background on, you're gonna see that on the edges here, we have a rather big cutout. And that's something people don't really like because it doesn't really look very, very unique to a flagship phone. Honestly, I don't have a problem with that. The only annoying thing is that sometimes it can hide some of the text on the keyboard, but of course you can tweak the position of the keyboard and easily fix that. 
overall very nice design very nice build quality very easy to hold in the hand my final verdict on the design and the build quality it has a very nice design very nice build quality doesn't provide though a very good grip although the protection is quite nice but then still make sure that you wear it with a case to avoid accidental crash test now let's talk about the display it is really very very simple guys this is one of the best screen on the market right now believe me the first time i opened the phone from the box i was really wow and i'm coming really from the s21 and s21 plus which didn't really have the wkhd plus display but that's not only resolution we have a 6.8 inch 4040p OLED display 10 bit which means 1 billion colors right and this is really important guys because the regular phones are producing something around like 16 million colors right this here is 10 bit which means 1 billion even over 1 billion colors very nice saturated display it does support hdr 10 plus and of course it does have the 120 hertz refresh rate it has 515 ppi and the touch sensor here has 480 hertz sampling rate which means playing games very very responsive also something very important i know a lot of people are asking this since the poker times but yes it does support wildwind l1 drn which means that you can stream 1080p hdr10 let's speak about brightness right now xiaomi claims that the phone produces 900 nits typical brightness and up to 1500 nits peak when of course you're watching some hdr content etc now we'll take a look at this video and you can decide for yourself but i think it just really a very very nice shop when you go into the settings and then choose display you're gonna be literally bombarded with options so the phone does support light mode and dark mode you can scale the dark mode it really has a reading mode on it has anti-flicker mode which is actually the dc dimming which we still don't have into the very premium samsung galaxy phones color shim very very important guys you can get the auto one which is adjusted colors based on the current lighting which is also something very similar to what we have in apple true tone then you have the saturated one which kind of boosts the colors then you have the original color which is a bit dull but represents very natural and realistic colors and then you can also click to advanced settings and click here for more settings so enhanced means displaying all the content in the widest color gamut possible you can go here to original you have also p3 color gamut and srgb srgb we're gonna get you something like the original color i'm staying usually on auto or saturated it really depends on your personal taste what is very important to know is that the display is capable to reproduce a very very realistic and natural colors going back to the settings you're gonna see here the display resolution like i told you it does support wqhd plus right and also of course fhd plus you can also choose to save battery while you're using the highest resolution wqhd plus which means the display is going to size down when of course it can do and it doesn't really work into the very same way we've seen into s21 ultra but it still does the job going one step back in the menu and here we have the refresh rate okay high 120 hertz standard 60 hertz now again this is not really like what we have in the s21 ultra the lpdo that can go down to 10 hertz and etc but it does maintain a very nice job and you can of course use it on 60 hertz honestly if you have a display like this you don't have any excuse but to stay only on 120 and wkhd and believe me it's gonna work the battery you sacrifice back in the settings and you have more things ai image engine inside you have the super resolution super resolution allows you to enhance the videos right but when you switch it on guys you need of course to pay with battery so i'm not using it going back you have also the ai image enhancement you can do so but then this is only visible on the screen and it oversaturates the picture so it's also not my choice then we have ai azure enhancement and i keep these two on very important for me when i watch my videos here on the phone and on the screen they look better on hdr and then last but not least memc remember this one from the oneplus 8 pro yeah it's exactly the same thing motion smoothness uh, honestly i avoid using it as well it does support auto rotate but what a bummer not really on the home screen like we seen on samsung phones now let's speak about the fingerprint scanner i think it's fast let me demonstrate honestly i think it's not the fastest around the market sometimes also not so accurate and the most annoying thing for me there is a haptic vibration that you cannot turn off only for the fingerprint i mean you need to switch all the haptic vibration and i do like them but i don't like when the screen vibrates when i unlock it via the fingerprint but there is something very positive guys when you go to settings and you scroll down and find the special features you're gonna see something called heart rate and in fact the fingerprint scanner also doubles as a heart rate sensor right so yeah that's true you can use it see you can use it and measure your heart rate why not i mean functions like this were present in some of the old samsung phones with optical sensors on the back 
everything now lost. I'm very happy to see that Jeremy is putting something back. See, two more seconds and boom, now I'm gonna get my heart rate measured. Okay, and here it is, 63 BPM, so I'm very relaxed, right? The next topic I want to address is the battery. The phone has a 4600 mAh, which might think is not enough. It does contain two cells. So these two cells are each 2300 mAh. They are connected in a series and this is very important for the fast wired and also fast wireless charging. But see something guys, I have some real data here. One of the first times I was using my phone, I was able to make 3 hours and 23 minutes screen on time and had 48%. Another very good example, I was out all day with the family and here you see still left with 12%. I was using the phone for 8 hours, very active, also with GPS, and I reached 5 hours screen on time, which pretty much means that the battery is just enough. So don't expect some miracles, but it can go between 4 to 6 hours mixed usage, which means Wi-Fi and also mobile connection. If you only use it on Wi-Fi, you're probably gonna get 7 hours, maybe even 8 if you're using it during night. But I think every time you're gonna be able to get at least four hours. And for me personally, four hours screen on time is just enough. It will hold for a whole day. Now let's speak about the speakers. In fact, let's just first hear the speakers. Very nice stereo separation. Just pay attention right now. Overall, I'm very satisfied. The speakers are very loud to my taste and overall they sound good. I did compare it with the iPhone. My wife is using iPhone 11. This is not worse or probably even better. I did also compare it to the Samsung S21 and I think that I prefer the Mi 11 better. Maybe S21 has the better speaker setup, but this here is very loud. Sometimes I even have the feeling that it vibrates like from the whole body. Though Harman Kardon is probably more than a gimmick, if you go to the settings and sound effects, you can see sound effects Harman Kardon certified pro audio. And you have different presets, smart, music, video, voice. And of course, then also when you connect headphones to the Mi 11, you have the option to optimize sound. I'm really happy with what they did here. It really feels premium and that's the right way to be. And we are now at performance. You know the story. This is using the latest Snapdragon 888 from Qualcomm. Qualcomm are saying 25% better than the previous generation, which was the Snapdragon 865. And the GPU inside is the Adreno 660 GPU, 35% more compared to the oldest version, which was the Adreno 650 from the previous generation 865. It has a new DSP and also a new ISP. The DSP here is the Hexagon 780. It uses the 6th generation AI engine and the new ISP integrated X60 5G or LT modem. This is the speed I was able to achieve when using 5G, so you can see here 5G, and I was like 30, 40 meters away from the 5G antenna, 740 megabits per second, which I think is pretty astonishing, and actually it's the first time I see speed like this on my phone, right? I've used also other phones right now in Sofia, don't have too much 5G, or at least my operator don't have, really have it everywhere, but when you have 5G, it's gonna be something like this, and this is really blazing fast. It does also come with Wi-Fi 6 support, native USF 3.1, and Quick Charge 5. Let's see the Geekbench result. The Xiaomi 11 is able to get 910 single core score and 3324 on the multi-core score. And we can go here and we can see how this individually compares to last year's flagship phones, like the OnePlus 8 Pro, which had 883 on the single core comparison versus Xiaomi Mi 11 910 and on the multi-score Xiaomi Mi 11 had 3324 and the 8 Pro had 3204. Let me also show you under bench which represents the speeds the phone is using to write from and to the phone's memory and from and to the phone's storage. Sequential read you can see 1540 megabytes sequential write half the speed 727, random read 230 megabytes per second, about the same for random write, and you can see all the values for SQLite insert, update, and delete. The only thing you need to know, guys, that this phone is really a beast, all right? So the Snapdragon 888 is really killing it, and although this year it is produced by Samsung, right, it is still doing a very, very good job. Now, I know there has been a lot of issues with Mi 11, overheating and thermal throttling and etc. but this will only happen if we really put it to the strain, like if you're an extensive gamer and etc. Luckily, in my case, I am just a regular user and I tend more to do a bit more pictures and video and luckily never had a problem with this. 
as to the OnePlus 8 Pro was overheating when the camera was used continuously. Here, I never had this problem. Honestly, this here is really flagship performance. Speaking about thermal throttling and overheating, while I was setting up my phone, it reached 43 degrees. And I want to show you something, guys. I did a restore out of Google where I downloaded again 214 applications, almost like 30 gigabytes of data. While doing this, my phone really remained stable, 39 degrees, 41 degrees, so it was not so bad. Then, the next day, I was one day off, so I was taking the family outside, I was using GPS for an hour and a half, and then my phone only got to 46. So what I'm saying is, if you're using this phone normally, or even put a lot of strain, it will not cause any problems, right? But I know with some of the benchmark, it can overheat, then probably also reboot and whatever power off. And of course, if you do very intensive gameplay, that you might have some problems, because actually it's a very thin phone, and the cooling's probably not the best. But overall, you should not expect to have thermal problems if you are a regular user. Now, is this really acceptable for a phone of this price tag? I don't know. I'm just saying what I saw with my own eyes, and honestly, that's not a problem for me. It is a really, really very, very quick and fast phone to use. All right, all right, we're getting into one of the most interesting topics in this review, and this is here, the thing on the back. This is really the camera. So how good is the camera on the Xiaomi 11? Is this really a high-end triple camera? What are the sensors? I'm going to show you some sample pictures, but first some history, guys. You can see we have three cameras on the back, okay? So, triple camera setup. The main sensor here is 108 megapixel. Down below, we have a 13 megapixel ultra-wide shooter, and this little tiny thing here is actually a 5 megapixel telemarco snapper, right? The main sensor here is the same sensor used also in last year's Mi 10. It is the 108 megapixel Samsung's Isocell Bright HMX sensor. It has 8 element lens and the aperture here is f1.85, which is actually quite good. Then the ultra wide camera is 30 megapixel, the sensor comes from Omnivision and it has a aperture of f2.4. Here very important guys, we have a fixed focus, so the ultra wide camera has a fixed focus. And last but not least again, this little tiny thing here, the micro camera, it does also utilize a sensor from Samsung, this time only 5 megapixel. And it also has an aperture of f2.4. Autofocus actually is available. It does only work somewhere between 3 and 6 to 9 centimeters. Yeah, I'm gonna see later. I'm gonna put some samples. And not to forget, guys, on the front. So on the front, we have 20 megapixel selfie camera. No autofocus here, right? Like what we used to have in the Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus. But we have an f of 2.2. And I'll show you samples, guys. Honestly, right now, if you're gonna be asking me one question and I should answer only yes or no, and the question is, are the cameras good? My answer is going to be yes. Now brace yourself as I'm going to be sharing some of the pictures I've taken with this camera. Now only the stock camera is being used for this review. In the meantime, behind the lines, I've been using also the Google camera. Latest build by Arnova and also one build by BSG. So expect a video on that a bit later on. And now buckle up and let's see the samples.
Now also a word on the video, the camera menu by the way looks very nice and simplified. From the handbook here you can access all the modes. 720p, 1080p, 4K, 8K, this phone can do 8K 30fps, 4K 60fps, it does have a 4-axis optical image stabilization that is always on and this only applies of course on the main sensor and it also has an electronic image stabilization on the main sensor and also the ultrawide. Honestly, the video capabilities of this phone are very, very, very nice. Of course, there is always a but. This is the media information from a video taken by the stock camera, and it sadly still has only 96 kilobit per second for the audio stream, which is very, very, very strange because this hardware is much powerful. And just take a look at something. If you're using old camera to shoot videos, you're getting a audio stream with a bitrate of 192 kilobits, so it's a bit better. But of course, I also recommend for you guys to use the stock camera to get the better video experience. And it's very sad because in the Mi 10 Pro and in the Mi 10 Ultra, we have here 320 kilobits per second. So maybe, maybe Xiaomi will fix this and put at least 128. Last but not least, I want to address MIUI 12. MIUI 12, I'm really impressed. They really were able to step it up their game. Now I see they are taking some things even out of Samsung, trying to improve their version of Android. For example, sharing a picture, you can click here and then you have something called privacy protection, right? Something that I also see on some recent Samsung phones. You can share the picture without location info and also share it without metadata in case you want to protect your information. Things like this, Xiaomi really incorporated quite a lot. Not to mention the other special features. One of them, of course, is loading windows. Let me demonstrate. If you go to the recent menu, you have something here called floating windows. Let me choose here now the telegram to be floating window and you can see right now I have this window here, right? So multitasking, but I can also resize the window, right? I can minimize it, right? And I can also make it appear full screen. Let me just show you one more time. Floating windows, telegram, Okay, if I want to maximize it, I just do like this and then boom. If I go back now into the recent menu and I go to floating windows and I choose telegram, see telegram opens and it all disappears. Features like this are very much well incorporated into Xiaomi MIUI 12. And not to mention there is also a newer version 12.5. I don't have it right now. Once I have it, of course, I'm going to do a full review. MIUI is far from perfect. These annoying things are almost always related to design things like this. See here, this here is the notification. It all looks very not aligned. And here you see, even this window goes outside of the notification shade. And I hate things like this, but it is the way it is. And I really hope it's only get better. These things, right, are here and there, but small hiccups. And I don't think that they'll change the big picture. The big picture is that this is a very capable phone. And actually one of the first phones to come with 888 last year, December 2020. So right now it's already April 2021. And if you get this phone for seven to eight hundred dollars, I don't think that you're gonna regret it. But hey, first you need to be okay using a phone with Xiaomi MIUI, and then second, okay, you need to also pay the sacrifices. Sacrifices are there is no telephoto camera, right? There is also no official IP rating. And uh, so if you are okay to let those things loose, then you pretty much got yourself a flagship phone here because Xiaomi 11 is nothing more, nothing less but a flagship phone. With that said, guys. I really hope that you have enjoyed this video. If that's the case, right, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. A sub will be much appreciated. With that said, VST over and bye.